You're about to get an exclusive look at the biggest state-of-the-art DNA crime lab in North America. And it's right here in the city at the office of the chief medical examiner. In this dry, sterile facility with purified air pumped in, the scientists handle more than 14,000 cases a year. Everything from muggings to murders to mass casualty tragedies. We are now entering the DNA crime lab where evidence is examined and DNA profiles are generated. And what's going on right here? Here we have one of our DNA scientists is analyzing samples and preparing them for DNA extraction. The extraction and separation is done by robots using specialized equipment. How many different types of DNA are there? DNA is the same in every cell of your body, so each human has a unique DNA profile. No other person on the planet has this DNA profile with the exception of an identical twin. New technological advancements give the scientists the ability to extract DNA from fewer and fewer cells, even with no body fluids. It's called touch DNA. Does that mean we're leaving our DNA pretty much everywhere we go? Yes, you abandon your DNA every time you touch something with your, that's why we're wearing gloves today, as to not leave our DNA behind, which would then could possibly uh, become a part of that evidence. Samples can come from clothing or objects connected with the crime. All evidence collection follows strict legal protocols. We see these evidence bags at crime scenes, detectives and NYPD officers collecting them. What exactly goes into this? So this would be evidence collected from the crime scene and this will allow its safe transport to the DNA crime lab. So evidence would go in, sealed, chain of custody, deliver to us. Our job then is to generate DNA profiles from any samples that may be on it. Kufferschmidt tells me DNA, including touch DNA, has been a game changer in solving sexual assaults. We're here in the crime scope room. This is where they use a blue light to identify body fluids and I'm going to need special glasses in order to see the work that's being done here. And that's full of DNA right there. So if that was sweat, saliva, semen, and we take a small cutting of that. That sample is analyzed and data extracted from it by the forensic investigators. It can later be used by detectives to compare to DNA on file from previous crimes. The real power of DNA profiling comes from comparing to known samples. So for a particular criminal investigation, we can make comparisons to the victim of the crime, to suspects, to exclusionary samples. Other people, their DNA may have been a part of it, but not a part of the crime. DNA can be destroyed by heat, humidity, and other environmental factors. Kufferschmidt says 9-11 presented an unprecedented challenge that drove him and his team beyond the latest technology and became a personal mission to find answers for grieving families. The 2,753 victims of the World Trade Center attack, there were over 22,000 remains recovered and many were very badly degraded or at a point where the fire or the jet fuel or the elements uh, had reached the point that very little DNA was left. He says that the other extreme is the DNA we leave behind everywhere all day long, on a discarded coffee cup, on a doorknob we grab, on everything and everyone we lightly touch. It's enough now to generate an unmistakable DNA profile. Our job is to provide the information, provide the DNA from these samples, no matter what kind of case it is. Um, our job isn't to um, guilty or innocent. Our job is these are the results. It's science. These are the correct results. Lisa Evers, Fox News.